My name is Danielle Arce. I'm a stand-up comedian. I think creative people are just really interesting, oh, yeah, inspiring, sure. and motivating to me. I agree. So, um, when I heard your comedy and it really like resonated with me, I was like, I have to get to know her. Like, she is first of all hilarious, and second of all, you just seem like really down to earth. And I love that you put if you know, because sometimes people say this is for my real life, but it really may not be. You know, right. I, so if it is, it is. Heck. You have a hell of a life. Let I don't tell you. <laughs> think. No, it's real. It's all real. I don't know how else to write. Um, I have tons of respect for people and comics who are almost strictly observational. Mm -hmm. I think it's amazing, and I think it's such a strong skill to have when somebody can do it right and do it originally. Mm -hmm. um, I've just always found the best way for me is to constantly just be very introspective and just talk, talk about what's extremely personable, personal to me, and then make myself vulnerable. Okay. Because I just find when a comic is doing that on stage, that's when I love them the most. Yep. So I'm just doing what I think is funny and what I just want to get off my chest and I want to make people happy I've with. I met a few comedians here and there. It's kind of how I met you. It was yeah. through Ox, who yeah. brought you out to the 805. Ox Turner is fantastic. I Shout love out that to guy. Ox. He is awesome. Yeah. He is awesome. I actually got to know him through an old high school um, friend. Okay. Uh, she's dating him and I was like that's cool so we connected that way and then I was on this podcast so yeah. that's awesome um, but speaking with different comedians a lot of them like yourself say that they use their real life yes but in that sense I do see that it sometimes can be like self-deprecating yeah and I don't know if I'm saying that word right guys that is right self-deprecating I, I, I really from? we want people to laugh at our pain okay. it makes us feel better about it and it validates I'm not the only one going through this. Yes. Misery loves company. Yes. You know, yes. so if I'm like, hey, you know, I'm very hairy or yeah. whatever. And if somebody, <laughs> if I see like even one girl laughing, I'm like, yes, queen, we yes. are we're, on the We're same already page. connected, right? Is that what it is? Kind of, yeah. And I love that. And it, it, just, it isn't always necessarily that either. It's just, I don't know. I, I've always said the best compliment for me because I don't like hearing you're talented. I don't like hearing, you know, you're funny I mean that's okay but it's like I've worked hard to be one mm -hmm. I wasn't I don't think I was funny in my first year or two do you know what I'm saying like probably were hilarious just, and you just don't think it's so, a but. skill that that's built though. right I believe right. I've built that skill and so I think the best compliment for me is when somebody comes up to me like you did and like hey like I'm also this this and this I've been afraid to talk about this this and you brought light to it and I loved that that is the best thing for me and I actually I just think people need props when props are due, oh, and thanks. honestly, yeah, I like, agree. there was a lot of funny comedians that night, but you stole it, I oh, felt, thank you. honestly, and I'm not just saying that, but that's what made me want to come up to you, thanks. I was like, this girl is hilarious, <laughs> and she just put herself out there, yeah. you know, and I was like, if it is true, it is. we are the same person inside, you're my spirit <laughs> animal in the most beautiful way, thank, uh, you. <laughs> thank you, that means but, a lot, yeah, no, I just, I really think that people that are creative need that because yeah. as well as being a creative like the support is why we do it too exactly. you know like we do it like you said to connect with that one person yeah. that needs to hear it or yes. whatever the case is so I think that's odd about how it started like what sure did you think you like you said you didn't think you were funny the first couple of well, years well so the thing is like from? well I mean I've been I was bullied a lot okay. growing up um I had a very strict dad it was really tough kind of like living with him when I was growing up he's a great person Right, right, just right. it was tough growing up um, and so you know I feel like kids go one of two ways when they're bullied they either get really introverted they don't want to share their feelings they just want to be left alone um, I think I feel like that's my brother falls into that category mm -hmm. and then there's people who are extroverted and want or, or seem more extroverted and want to make people laugh and kind of like Use ease it. their pain mm -hmm. that I'm that person okay so I've always kind of been that kind of class clown you know kind of person um, when I got older, I realized I really wanted to get it. Like, I've been acting since I was a kid, and okay. I really wanted to dive into it. So I took improv, liked improv, um, but it was getting, I don't know. I just felt like something was missing. Okay. And I think it was, I just wasn't, I didn't know how to write. I didn't know how to create. I was just relying on other people. It was all on the spot. Fun, but wasn't fulfilling. So once I, I reached out to somebody when I was about 24. Um, I reached out to somebody about stand-up. They helped me with joke structure, and I kind of just got into the groove of that. So, 
No. And how are you, how old are you now? If you don't mind saying that. June. So right now we're in March. June will be eight years. So you did the math. Okay, there you go. Yeah, good way to put <laughs> that's it. That's literally what happened. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. cool though. That's yeah. awesome. You kind of found your niche and it's taking yeah. off. And like when I started, I really, I didn't really like stand up so much because I was trying to write for the audience okay. rather than just say what was coming from me. And as soon as it clicked, of like, who cares? Don't worry about what anyone's gonna think. Don't worry about what your family thinks. Don't worry about what your friends think. Like you have to say what's real. Mm -hmm. Then it started really changing for me. So yeah, when I'm open about my divorce, when I'm open about details on sex life or whatever, it's like that's, I know that's what's gonna do the best because that's what's relatable, that's what's real, that's what's coming from my heart. You so. literally are saying what's going through half the audience's mind right. when they're on first date. That's what they're trying to, yeah. So I love that, yeah. I love that. So you know, whether, and so I, I try to somewhat, I don't necessarily try, sometimes I can throw an observational thing here and there, but for the most part it's like, no, this is just what happened to me. That's, and, and it happens to be really funny. Thank, thank you, yeah, and I hope that it's, I can, you know, create the jokes and find the bits and a very bad day. And I had two shows that night. Um, literally was on the phone with my therapist. And, and the show started at seven and I was supposed to be the first on the lineup. Mm -hmm. We're on the phone 7.05, she's still on the phone with me and I'm bawling my eyes out, you know, cause it's a good therapy yes, session and yes. I needed that. Yes. And the post comes out and is like, like you gotta get off it's the phone. time now. So Let's I had no time to like prep and my set was, mm -hmm. so I did okay. In the second show, it took me half hour, it was in Long Beach, it took me half hour to get there and they were like, so I had a half hour in the car a bit. and then when I got there I had 15 yeah. minutes to my, to my set. I went into the bathroom and I literally talked to myself in the mirror and I was like, change up your set, you got this. Like I had to let myself know you're here for a reason. Mm -hmm. I crushed that night and it was, it was night and day sets. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of the same oh. jokes but different oh. mentality. But different, men, you know, but the better mentality. You know? with people. I love hearing people's ups and downs because I've had ups and downs. Who hasn't Same. had ups and exactly. downs? You know? Exactly. Right. And like you said, kind of like what you do with your comedy, having it be very relatable. Yeah. That is so important to me because now with social media, like we were talking about, like people put their best foot forward yes. on social media. Yep. Nobody puts I, their dirty I wanted to be a little different. Some people different. do. <laughs> <laughs> I, no. um, I wanted to be a little different with these kind of interviews. Yeah. I wanted to touch on mental health and how important it is it's to have so an It's so important to talk about. So yeah, that's Absolutely. amazing that you're doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, I'm selfishly kind of doing it for myself, but <laughs> I just know like that one person hears it that is maybe an aspiring comedian right. that knows the only person about. that's suffering through this yeah. or going through this. and. In retrospect, it can be kind of funny. It is really funny. Because <laughs> maybe this is a little bit, um, what's the word? Nihilist of me or whatever, like, uh, but nothing matters. Yeah, nothing does. Nothing matters. Like, I, I'm, I feel like I'm having a, an epiphany like every single day yeah. because I've been tripping out yeah. on perspective. Right. The word perspective and just like what it means yeah. and how even at this moment, I was literally having this drunk conversation the other day, yeah. but even sober, guys. Yeah. Literally, like, we're going to leave this experience today having two completely different And no matter what, we're, we're going to die one day. Exactly. No matter what, the end is, and the it end happen is the same. Any yeah. minute of any day. Yeah. So we need to just do what we love to do. Yeah. Be successful or not. Whatever. But also, it's like, I that's why it. I talk about whatever I want on stage, because it's like, who knows? Like, this is what I love to do the most. And so it's, I don't know, it's... Are you Who cares about what I talk about? I have somewhere to sleep. I have food. I have a car to drive. Find the positive. You know, the bill that I can't pay today, why would I stress about that today? Mm -hmm. Worry about that when I have the money. Worry about, money is coming, money is energy. We attract what we emit. Yeah. So, you know, it's, having that shift really changes things. If I'm constantly worrying, then I'm. It's killing ourselves, really. Yeah. It's just gonna make things worse. Yeah. Just constantly attract that negativity. So. You know, it's a whole law of attraction. But it's like, it's also, you put your hard work in with it as well. Yes. You've got to put in the meditations, you got to put in those, you know, That's affirmations yeah. and, and <laughs> mantras or whatever you do, but it's also followed up with like, all right, you're hustling. And then that's when, quote, I hate the word luck, but quote unquote luck right. happens. I feel like, yeah, no, I definitely. I and I don't like the word hate. Right. I hate that, I don't like that I said the word hate. But yeah, <laughs> I don't like the word luck. It's the same way I don't like the word talent. It's like, things happen for a reason. I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think if you put in the work, you want it bad enough, 
Nothing and, can stop you. you. And you have good intentions. Exactly. Intention is with very intentions. important. So, like, I know that if I'm going into comedy, like, if I've noticed I've had my worst nights are like, why didn't I get on that show? Why didn't I get on that mic? Why didn't I get those laughs tonight? If I have that kind of mentality, that is detrimental, and that's that's wrong. My intentions aren't pure at that point. Because mm -hmm. then I'm doing this for the wrong reasons. Okay. You know, like... I didn't get laughs. Okay, let's analyze. Why didn't I get those laughs? What was what was going through my head? What was wrong with my material or whatever? Okay, I didn't get on the show. Okay, what can I do to be funnier? What can I do to improve my video? Or maybe they're just somebody that I that need to see me live. Mm -hmm. Who knows? But instead, but shifting that focus, I think, is so important because if your intentions aren't right, then those great coincidence. So how did you get all this information and start evolving that into a, a practice? You uh, know, did you, did you read something? So, you... I don't know. I, I've just, I've, I've been fortunate enough to have a couple of people in my life who are very into, you know, meditation and just mental health, just taking care of yourself in the right ways. And I didn't really start exploring that very much until the last few months. Um, and especially in the last month and a half, I've really been adamant about it. And, you know, at first it's like, okay, I'm doing these meditations, these mantras, or I'm writing every morning, just free writing. And, okay, yeah, I'm doing it. It's okay. But then, like, today, for, for instance, I got out of work at 3. Nothing, ha nothing happened out of the ordinary. And I just felt this rush of good vibes. Yay! Out of nowhere. And, and for me, it's like, oh, this stuff is working. So that's why I'm so passionate about it now because it's like, no, this is actually happening and people are reaching out to me more. You know? I, I, I'm like, I'm nobody, but thanks. But, <laughs> no, but like, I'm just saying, the, the little things, I, I, love it. I feel like it's such a blessing. I do even, too. No matter what, even if two people watch this or 500 people watch this or a million people watch this. So. <laughs> you know what I mean? But to me, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I still view this as a, as a beautiful blessing from the universe. I, I do. You know, so I, I, that's how I view it. I love that, yeah. and I, I agree. I feel yeah. like the intent is so important. Yes, it um, is. When you come from a good place, yeah. I feel like you really do attract good people. And I care less, like I, I, two, two separate words. I care less about why didn't I get on that show? Oh, I need to get this, or I need to get that. It's more of like, okay, I'll submit for this, mm -hmm. and if it's right, it'll happen. If not, it'll happen in time. That's I just such gotta a keep way, working hard. Like a off your shoulders I'm sure and the important thing is to like sometimes just say it out loud talk to yourself write it out you know and it, like it, it helps and I didn't realize how much it helped until recently so that's why I've had this whole new shift in this but I just bought the book as a gift for somebody else um, so I'm because I've been doing a lot of more tithings lately um, the artist's way okay it's called the artist's way it's like $11 on Amazon it's it's a textbook and it's essentially a 12-week course okay there's some really good reading and really good writing exercises and other exercises to help unblock your creative side. So we all go through those those peaks and valleys as artists, no matter what your art is, whether it's comedy, whether it's painting, whether it's writing, whether it's acting, we go through these things. So it helps you to unblock that and get you into some good like habits. And that's helped me a lot. Another thing that helps me is guided meditations. I'm that kind of person where I'm constantly thinking about a million things because of my anxiety. So I can't just sit and breathe and focus on my breathing like some people can. So I need somebody in my ears kind of guiding me through a meditation. So I do some of those as well. That's really good. Advice. I do those at least a few times a week. So much um, for chatting with me. I talk a lot. So, so do I. So do I. <laughs> but I love it. It was never a dull moment, which I love.